Hello, hello, hello. It is Friday. We are talking cycling fashion, specifically how to dress like a cyclist when you are not riding the bike. Now this is a massive subject and one that I want to revisit in coming weeks and months because we could do things like what to wear at work, what to wear on the weekend, what to wear when you're at a cycling event. But today what I want to do is just give some broad style ideas and obviously open it up to you guys, but give five tips on what you should wear to look like a cyclist. All right, let's get into the first one, which is to wear some cycling brand leisure wear. Now, this is obviously an easy win for anyone and, and and honestly anyone can go out and just buy like a Rafa t-shirt or a MAP t-shirt or you know a Castelli pair of shorts or something like that. But I want to dive a little bit deeper into this for the first tip and that is a little bit of a technical garment, okay? So a lot of these brands will run puffer jackets, nice long sleeve shirts or jumpers and I think that's where the real win is. So I know Castelli do some really nice track jackets. Obviously Rafa have their outer wear range of stuff that, you know, their puffer jackets and stuff like that. And it's potentially, it's potentially a space where actually it being a cycling brand isn't that important. I mean, you can get away with a good North Face jacket or a good Patagonia jacket or something like that that just has like a little bit of technicality to it, like almost like a gabbery style thing. And it's like a little nod to it being an outdoors thing. So my first tip is a nice technical garment, potentially a cycling brand technical garment. Now the second tip feeds straight off that. It's not a tip, it's a 100% don't. Your cycling apparel, the, the gear that you wear on the bike, is for riding your bike. There is no situation where a gilet is to be worn in a social situation. No golf game requires you to wear your cycling gilet. Arm warmers are not a fashion accessory. And finally, as part of this, cycling caps. There is one time, two times, two times, you are allowed to wear a cycling cap. The first, you have either completed your ride or you're just about to begin your ride, you pull up to the cafe, you remove your helmet, you place cycling cap on your head, you sit down at said cafe or bar, and in your cycling kit, you wear your cycling cap. Obviously you can ride with it during the rain, That's we're not talking about riding, we're talking about off the bike. The second situation is you're on the podium. That's it, there's two, there's two situations, that is it. Under certain circumstances, very, very good mechanics can use it whilst working in their workshop, but that is not something I am familiar with. So, you know, good mechanics, maybe bob in there and let us know if you think that is an acceptable use of the cycling cap. For us, normal mortals, you have two circumstances for cycling caps. Now, my third tip is based around the fact that cyclists should always wear long socks. But I want to delve a little bit deeper into it than just that. First part is, well, when I say long socks, normal solid length socks, a cyclist should never wear ankle socks. You have two types of shorts that definitely give a nice little cycling flavor when worn correctly. The first is like an athletic short. Now I'm not talking like AFL shorts here. I'm, I'm kind of talking like a loose fitting kind of not full basketball baggy, but somewhere in that space. And the other is the tailored short. Very nice tailored finish, beautiful, beautiful. Somewhere in there. The jury is very much out on cargo shorts. Look, think of it this way. Would Vincenzo Nibali wear a cargo short? I'd suggest no. So in summary, in that particular region, to try and look like a cyclist, you want to run a longer sock, a short that definitely ends before the top of the knee. Nice tailored short, never ankle socks. We good? We good. Before we carry on, and if you're enjoying this video and you love really terrible tech reviews, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video. You know that thing that you do, like if you go to an event or something like that, and the, the first, well not the first thing you do, because that's particularly strange, but 
you'll know the people who are riding the event because you'll they'll probably be wearing shorts and you'll see oh they've shaved their legs like and you just immediately then know right okay so that's a cyclist who's doing the event okay so that's the point of this vlog i want to kind of give little little sort of identifiers for, for all of us okay so under that umbrella my fourth tip is fast fashion cycling -y t t-shirts are not for cyclists okay so by that i mean like you know like a super dry or something like that might have you know like a a racer or a bike racer or like wheel or spokes or something on on there like nothing wrong with that fantastic go nuts go get one but my point here is that that doesn't identify as you a cyclist and it doesn't identify you to other cyclists that you are a cyclist so because i have lots of no, I actually don't mean mates, but I have a few friends and they're not cyclists and they would happily wear that t-shirt. Absolutely fantastic. Great. But for us cyclists, that's not a thing. It's not an identifier. If that's the fourth part of the tip that is the no, the yes is to wear a cycling brand on your t-shirt or something like that. Now, here's where this gets really interesting. Okay, this is this is the bit I love. Yes, you could wear a Bianchi, you could wear a Shimano, you could wear, you know, SRAM, big, big Brocampi, they, they do all that stuff, big branded ones, everyone knows, it. Go bang, cyclist. But you know where the real flex is? You know where the real flex is? If you find like some niche component brand, like homemade component brand or something, and they do like a hat or, or a t-shirt or something like that a local distributor's t-shirt. So it's like it's like an underground, it's like you, you discovered them before they were cool type, you know, album cover thing. Do you follow me? So the fourth tip is to avoid the fast fashion t-shirty type things. Do a bit of hunting, find a cycling branded t-shirt or even better, like underground componentry brand accessory. All right, we're good. And the fifth tip before I hand this over to you guys to go nuts, because I can't wait to hear your feedback on this. So my fifth tip is if you don't want to do the cycling brand thing, there's no cycling brands on you, fantastic, all good. There are two sort of looks essentially that you can go for to try and look like a cyclist. The first look is really to ask yourself, what would Fausto Copy wear? And by that, I mean, you go in the full Euro Dapper look. Nice slim cut trousers, some loafers, a dress shirt, potentially unbuttoned a couple of buttons with some, maybe a little hint of gold chain shining through. You know the look I'm talking about here. That is definitely a cyclist look that you can pull off, but that is not for everyone. And the second look, this, this one's hard to describe. I think it breaks down to this, that as a cyclist, you just pay attention to footwear. You wear neat, nice footwear, and very clean, nice socks. I think if you get that area sorted in general, that it's a good cyclist look. I think if you get the footwear and the socks all nice, neatly sorted, then I think that kind of opens the floor up. You don't have to wear big cycling branded stuff, but it is potentially where, where we were talking about before, that little niche componentry brand hat. You know, that that can really play a role in there. Or that little technical kind of feature on the normal bit of clothing. Now you guys criticized me last week for not mentioning enough brands. Well, I've doubled down this week, haven't I? I've gone into severe depth, severe depth, when it comes to how to dress like a cyclist. Now, as I said in the beginning, this is a subject I'm gonna revisit, 100%. because I wanna talk about what to wear when you go to an event, what to wear when you're at work, what to wear when you're on the weekend, all that type of stuff, definitely. But in this particular circumstance, I would love, I would love to hear your feedback on how to give a little bit of a cyclist flavor to your overall daily get up. And think of it this way, okay? If you're walking down the street and you pass another person, you wanna be able to pass that person and go, that's a cyclist. That's the tip I really want to hear from you guys. When we did the first Fashion Friday, I was like, how am I going to keep these going? Like, there's not that much to talk about. There's a lot to talk about. There's seriously so much stuff to talk about. What I'd love to do is get to a point where we're able to talk about like new releases and stuff like that, like have brands and stuff send me things and be like, Chris, this is going to be released. And we can do like a, 
this is coming out. What do you think? Is it any good? Is it not any good? I'd also like to get a few guests on here, but people are kind of scared to sit around and talk about cycling fashion. They think they'll be judged by people for being, I don't know, self-absorbed and narcissistic. That's weird. Anyway, with that in mind, uh, we will see you very, very soon. Exciting weekend coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Until then, peace. Just finished up shooting a vlog there about like how to dress like a cyclist off the bike, like tips and that kind of thing. Yep. And one of the really key ones was don't wear any sort of cycling gear that you wear on the bike off the bike because it's just not cool.